Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Bernie. I'm a concept art mentor at CG Spectrum. And today we're going to continue with the uh, Wildcat character concept that we started last week. And we will finish it up today. So, so far what I did was I actually made it all darker. Uh, if you guys know how I work, I usually do go from a, a much darker base and build up upon it. So far, what I've done here is uh, just figure out the anatomy for myself. And I know that I'm going to be adding, you know, quite a bit of fur here, at least on the outer part and the top part of the body. But yeah, again, this is really to give me a good base to work off of. I colorized it. I made it darker and I added in some uh, color variations, basically taking into account this uh, outer layer of fur right here that I'm looking in the reference. Uh, I want that area to look darker and a slightly different hue and the inner part right here, the belly area, to be uh, wider and lighter. So yeah, basically I'm taking that into account and I did darken up the uh, base right here, the lower part of the body, just so it, you know, you don't, I'm not drawing too much attention down here in the light areas because it does get very light down here, but I'm gonna kind of ignore that and darken it a bit. And now I just started adding the uh, darker designs in the face. So we'll do that. So again, I am basically uh, creating a, a solid base to work off of so that later when I do my lighting pass, um, I don't have to try to figure out what the design or forms are. They're already there. And it'll be much easier for me to work on, work on top of this. Hey everyone, how are you guys doing? All right, cool, so let's get started. I don't know why it says Electra on there. Sure, why? <clears throat> All right, cool. So I am looking at reference off the screen right here, in addition to what I have here uh, for the uh, dark designs on the face. Oops. Oops. Sorry about that. I know the audio was a bit off there. I just realized it. <laughs> Hey guys, how are you guys doing? My bad, it's Monday morning here. And I'm still out of it, but let's wake up while I'm doing this. All right, guys. All right. The eyeballs I'll leave for later. And let me know if there's audio issues, by the way, again. I did recently update um, my audio, so there might be issues. All right, cool. So again, I am adding in the darts here and I'm not trying to be super like detail oriented about it. I'm just trying to get the, uh, at least the right location for these darks, but I don't really care too much about what it looks like at this point because I will be painting over a lot of it once I'm adding in the fur details. And I am going to refrain at this point from going into those fur details. You do want to hold off on that until the very end. All right, cool. And I am going to be uh, 
making some corrections here as well. And even in the dark areas right here, you do like in the shadowed areas, you do always want to keep uh, your forms clear. I know sometimes people will, if it's like a shadowed area or a dark area, artists will sometimes just make it all dark, right? And make it kind of ambiguous regarding the forms and volume. But you still want to give a, uh, a value range so that the forms are readable even in the darker areas. Just a very limited uh, value range, but still, nevertheless, you want a value range. see some of the uh, whisker pits here that look kind of dark so I'm going to add that and they are on a curve so I want to keep that in mind as well they're going around that front part of the, the mouth these little details that you're going to be adding they really help in selling the uh, image as believable or something that could exist in real life so yeah being at this point really paying attention to the details that you see here are going to help And the shape of the Lynx's nose is actually pretty different from what I'm doing here, but I'm just going to keep it this way for my concept, just because I want it to look a bit stronger. The, um, the uh, reference nose has like, uh, it's more petite looking, more narrow, which I don't really like. It is looking like a tiger right now, but uh, we'll try to address that later. I think it's, yeah, it has to do with the color and uh, the fur not being long enough or looking like a lynx. But we'll address that. <clears throat>
Alright, cool. So, uh, just a few more details in the head. Before we go to the body. I'm still keeping things very, very loose. Just trying to get the flow of how I want the patterns to look like. Hmm. And they seem a bit random here on the body. It's hard to see it. So I'm kind of making it up because they are very spotty around here. So I think I'm just going to indicate it real quick and then move forward. And it does look like the patterns are kind of going in a line or maybe I'm just making it up or seeing that. but. Kind of like that. These spots are going across this, these lines, if that makes sense. So you always want to try to make sense out of what you see and organize it, even if it's, you know, of course, uh, p different people are going to see it, um, see things differently, interpret things differently when they see a reference image. But you do want to try to make sense out of it. I could kind of see these lines here and the patterns kind of following that. So that how I'm gonna at least think as I move forward with this. All right, cool. So from here, I'm just gonna start building up on the face area. I'm gonna start with the face. Uh, sometimes that if you're not sure where to start from, I always just start from the face because it'll give me a, a starting point or a reference point on what everything else is going to look like. So that is what I will do. Guys, uh, can you guys type in the uh, chat? Oh, hey, Pietro. Yeah, I see you there. I missed that. Yeah, it's going good. Uh, yesterday, I just got a haircut. And I haven't, had a bit, I haven't had a been in, at the barbershop in a while. And I just decided to go yesterday with my kids. And... Luckily, I went just in uh, the nick of time because they told me that they were closing. Yeah, it was their last day yesterday. Uh, they had to lock down and close their shop for at least three weeks. So, uh, so yeah, I'm glad I went to get a haircut. And we actually had to get the haircut outside. Um, right outside of the shop too because they had a limit on how many people could be inside of the uh, barbershop and the limit was four people so we were outside getting a haircut <laughs> on this on, in the parking lot basically which was interesting all right all right so I'm gonna do a light pass on the face make it a little more yellowish 
you know, a little, little more uh, lighter and desaturate it. Let's try that. Yeah, that's way too bright and too yellowish. Hey, Stuart. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm just seeing it like that. Again, I'm just trying to make sense out of it. I know sometimes when I see like artist work of like how they rendered animals, they'll just randomly throw these spots down, right? And it looks so random. It looks weird, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I think everything's designed in nature, right? So there is some sort of structure or, or design to things if we look carefully enough, I think. So th that's at least what I'm looking for. Is some kind of structure or design to certain things that look random. That may appear to be random, right? All right, at this stage, I am going to start indicating a little bit of fur texture. Not like crazy, but I am going to start to indicate it. And I'm just uh, going through my reference right here just to double check the face. How's it going? What are you guys working on this today? You guys working on anything cool? And how many of you guys wake up in the morning and just start working? <laughs> or does it take you guys time to, you know, fully wake up to get working on stuff on any, like, you know, art projects or anything like that? Here I am thinking about the um, hair direction, the way the fur is growing. So I'm trying to, and, and I'm not looking at the super fine details, but I am trying to pay attention to the overall direction of the fur. 
and keep that in mind as I'm placing it and as I'm placing like hard edges where the fur is coming out of. And it, it looks to me like it's kind of coming out of this shape, this row shape, right? Across the head. So that's what I'm trying to follow. As I indicate the fur here. And you don't, I, I'm trying to make it somewhat random while still retaining that row direction, but still trying to break it up a little bit so it looks more natural, but still retaining the structure, if that makes sense. Hey Stuart, Stuart's asking, in an industry setting as a character concept artist, how fast do you have to be to get an idea how fast do you need to complete one character concept? How far do you render it? Yeah, so um, it all depends. Uh, it depends on where you work at. Some companies will give you a lot of time for you to explore while other companies will put pressure on you to produce so it really does depend in general as a concept artist you do want to be pretty fast at generating ideas uh, so basically you know the process is split into two where in the beginning you are focused more on the ideas less on the rendering so again, it's a more of a creative uh, process or creative um, visualization that you're trying to show quickly, right? So your ability to think of different ideas and uh, visually communicate it is very important in the beginning stage of the concept. Then later on, once that design has been approved, uh, your rendering ability has to be pretty fast because that's what you'll be doing after that design has been approved. You're just focused on rendering it, right? Fleshing it out, all the details, the materials, all that. So yes, I mean, you do have to be pretty fast compared to an illustrator, right? I mean, an illustrator has their own challenges, obviously, but we're not, we're not gonna render something as far as a, an illustrator would, even at the uh, most polished stage. but it gets pretty rendered depending again on the game style. Um, and again, for the company that you work for, they, you'll be surprised how detailed, oh, maybe not, because I'm sure you guys look at all the concept art online. But yeah, there are some concept art pieces that look like illustrations almost, or they're at least as detailed as an illustration. Uh, or if, if the concept is for cinematics, right? So there is a huge range. Um, generally, I would say for a character concept, you would spend about five to seven days on it. Uh, again, this is probably for a medium important character, not not a um, a uh, main character. If it's like a main character in a game, it could take months, right? For important characters, it could take up to a month to design something because you're doing multiple variations and multiple passes on the same concept. Uh, but for an NPC, maybe five to seven days on it. Um, yeah. But to be honest, um, in my opinion, as a student, you don't have to worry about that or someone who's trying to get into the industry. Don't overly be concerned with how fast you are at something because you will get there. It's just practice, right? You're going to get faster with time. And when someone looks at your portfolio <clears throat> to hire you, they don't know how long it took you, right? Yeah, so why does it matter? And if, yeah. The way, what, what we can tell, so when we're looking at your portfolio, we can kind of tell, like, 
what your process is by looking at the way you've rendered something uh, we can tell if you you overworked something right it looks like you just noodled it to death right you you weren't sure about what direction you're taking it or how to render something so you're overworking it like you can you know artists can tell an art director can tell by looking at it. that means that basically means to me that you're you're uncertain and because of that you're being slow right um, you're looking at reference too closely and trying to just copy it right instead of being confident in how you're trying to transition that reference into your concept um, when you indicate something quickly and it reads well that's when i know that you're able to paint quickly right if that makes sense so that's more of what we're looking at or at least i look for if something looks overworked i know you're spending too much time on it does that make sense So here I am again indicating some of that fur and I am going over the dark areas a little bit to show that, you know, it's like a furry texture. I might have overdone it here, but let's just keep going. <clears throat> and I am trying to focus the details in on the uh, center part of the image, not the outer part. I could keep this outer part right here. That's whatever's closer to the edges a bit more um, just indicate it while I do want to render out and clarify these areas right here. All right, now that I'm looking at it, I think I went too light, but I'm just going to keep going and adjust it as I go. So I'm realizing um, right around here, I'm going to, I was supposed to make it lighter there, but I think it just looks too bright overall, but let's see. So I am going to try throwing in the light here. A lighter fur color and see what it looks like in comparison to the uh, rest of the values in the image Let's see uh, if I really have to make those adjustments
Oops. Hmm, I think I'm on the wrong layer. Wonderful. <laughs> it's okay, I did mess up a little bit there. No, oh, I'm okay. Oh, that was just temporary. Let's just keep going. I'm gonna add some whites to that around the eye. That lighter fur that's right around the eyeball. Tiger. <laughs> hey, Margaret, what's going on? <laughs> hey, Stuart, you're still waking up too, huh? Yep, I'm in California too. Where? What part of California, Stuart? I'm in uh, Arcadia. It's uh, near Pasadena, east of Pasadena. Hey, Rushback, I don't know why I'm live on uh, Spectre's channel as well, I have no idea. Not sure what's going on with that. Let me double check, did I do something wrong? I don't think I did. I just did what I do all the time. <laughs> Let me double check that. to mess with it I don't want to screw it up even more <laughs> but uh, oh yeah your Cintiq uh, came in awesome I'm using the uh, 22 version right now too uh, how do you like it Stuart you're from San Diego awesome the weather's nice there in San Diego doesn't get too hot in the summers, right? Compared to where I'm from. Oh, uh, you're still unpacking it? You must be excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you're gonna like it. I just hope you don't have any driver issues like I was having. Yeah, so when I'm looking at reference and trying to transfer that over to my uh, concept piece, sometimes uh, I'll notice things, you know, in the design, like this area right here, for example. And I'm not sure if it'll look right or better if I follow the reference or not. So I'm just trying it. Sometimes I'll try it and if it doesn't look the way I want it to or it looks odd, then I'll just, you know, revert back to what I had. Uh, but I'm just giving it a shot to see if it does help. And it's, it's kind of an awkward situation here because the value of that fur gets lighter here in the reference. Uh, when really I wanted to go into shadow like if you see my right side, right? So it makes it like it can be confusing for the viewer to look at like why does it if it looks like this area is being lit But it's just the fur being lighter, right? But if I darken it too much then it could just look 
you know, like I didn't render it correctly or didn't put the values in correctly. So it's, it's kind of a tricky situation where you have to decide uh, whether you want to adopt that from your reference or just ignore it. And certain details just make your image overall too busy for no good reason. So again, I would omit certain things. But again, sometimes you can't tell unless you try it. So that's why I'm just giving it a shot, seeing how it goes. I'm just going to simplify this design. It looks a bit odd there, so. And with the face, I do spend a lot more time on it than I would the rest of the body, just because, again, it's the face. That's where uh, most of the attention is going to go. from the viewer. I don't have a screen protector on mine, um, but uh, you can get one. Um, you could get one that has that uh, toothy texture on it if you have, you know, issues with it being too slippery, like a lot of people do. Uh, I haven't tried it. I just heard good things about it. So look up on Amazon, um, you know, a screen protector with a more. Uh, the texture to it and see you know check out the reviews see if it if it might work for you I might try that out later I'm just used to this now so it doesn't really bother me too much um, but yeah I mean if if I was just starting out I would definitely check it out especially if you draw a lot on the Cintiq and um drawing is a big part of your uh, art style where you know the drawing itself shows through then I would definitely at least try it out
Hashios asking if anyone in the chat wants up with an iPad Pro. I have an iPad Pro that I use uh, sometimes when I'm, you know, traveling or... Yeah, if I'm just messing with Procreate. Sometimes I'll use a, an app called Astropad. And what that does, it, it links it the iPad Pro to my uh, MacBook Pro or MacBook. And then um, it basically works like a Cintiq. So you can check that out too. Again, it's called Astropad. Look that up. Okay, awesome. You're familiar with it. Cool. It works pretty well. Uh, the only thing that bothers me about it, and again, it, I've heard that it doesn't bother a lot of other people, but it does for me, is um, when you're trying to uh, move the cursor around on the screen, without you know pressing the screen, you're just trying to see the cursor move from left to right. Whenever I'm trying to, for example, color pick something, you can't see the cursor move. And that kind of bothered me a little bit. Uh, maybe it's something you I would get used to if I kept using it. But yeah, again, I only use uh, AstroPad if I'm traveling or if I you know have to use it for that reason. But it's actually a good uh, option to have, in my opinion. All right, let's keep going. completely overworking this area right now because I was distracted <laughs> and I was just noodling it without thinking. Uh, but you can see what I mean when I say overworked. This chin area, lower part of the mouth, is definitely overworked. You can tell I didn't know what I was doing because I was just zoning out. Um, yeah, it just looks completely overworked with all these brush strokes and it doesn't even look right. Let's just keep going. question about brushes do you ever use texture brushes like for fur skin surface texture when creating concepts or do you prefer to use more straightforward paint brushes and create those effects yourself like you're doing now yeah it depends um, in this case I don't feel like I need a texture brush you can use one of course um, I tend to keep things super simple uh, I don't know again if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, that's just what I do. Uh, there are instances where I do feel like if I do feel like I'll, I need a textured brush to get an effect, like a certain look, 
to the material, then I will use a texture brush. But again, I don't use anything fancy. There are, again, specific times where it is necessary for me to find a specific type of texture brush. I will. Uh, but that's rare for me, at least, as a, um, as a more of a character concept guy. For environment concept artists, it's different. Um, I would highly recommend that you, you know, create a brush set that you uh, use and that you're familiar with. But I would say it's not necessary to, as a character concept guy, to, you know, use texture brushes. It can be helpful though. It depends on the, your style, you know, working. Again, for me, I like to keep things simple. All right, so let's go to the other side. I'll clean up the uh, silhouette later. That's something I usually do at the very end. kind of weird to me that it is really looking like a tiger because I'm not even looking at any reference for a tiger right now. Uh, it's possible that the um, the design of these wild cats are just very similar to each other and a more similar similar than I think and just by following the patterns that I see um, and I'm kind of exaggerating them so it's ending up looking like a tiger in a weird way. Cause I don't, I think I've only drawn a tiger twice or maybe three times. And so it's not like I would automatically tend to make it look like a tiger, I don't think. Um, I think it might really be one of those things where just the uh, underlying design behind this links has similar features or designs as a tiger naturally. And so it's just showing up when I exaggerate the, the different shapes and forms that I see. It might just be the nose too, like, and the mouth area. I did make it a lot larger than it is. And again, um, just to make it look stronger, so that might be a big reason as well. But these patterns, they look like tiger patterns too, even though I'm looking at a lynx. All 
All right, cool. So let's, I'm gonna put some details on the nose. Let me try actually shrinking the nose and see what it looks like, just for fun. Yeah, the lynx's nose is much more narrow, actually, and smaller. It just looks kind of weird to me. I guess it just doesn't look as strong, and I don't really like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna call you Ian. I don't know what your name is, or if that's an L or an I. Anyways, Ian, yeah. He, you're saying, I feel like as a newbie, I got into trying them out, but it often looked like too much, so I guess just use sparingly when you need. Yeah, it just depends. Uh, yeah, don't overly use textured brushes for sure. Only when you need it. Hey, Akasha. Oh, you see the links? Maybe it's just the ear part. <laughs> but yeah, the, um, yeah, exactly. You're saying the ears. Uh, narrowing the nose made a difference. It does. It makes it look closer to the links, but uh, I just don't really like the look of it, I guess. I might switch back to it later. I don't know. But let's, for now, let's just keep going. I just want to try it out real quick. And I know it has to do with the colors as well. Uh, but for, And that's easy to fix or adjust later on. So I'm just going to keep going. At this point, oh yeah, let's do a little bit of the ears, just indicate, give it some light. <laughs> and then um, we'll go to figuring out the uh, neck and body area. I'll try messing with the ears again later. I might exaggerate it a bit. Not sure right now. Maybe I'll leave it exaggerated so I remember to address it. That looks pretty weird, but uh, I'm 
I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> All right. I'm just looking at a sketch I did over um, to see how to take the fur around the neck area. All right, so let's just start blocking some stuff in. <clears throat> Yeah, the larger nose does look more aggressive, less timid looking, right? So when I'm I'm thinking about um, layering the hair here around the neck area and the uh, crap area. But as I'm doing that, I want to make sure I don't create like a, uh, just a line, right? I want to break up that line, that edge, so it looks natural again. And I'm kind of following the uh, dark line pattern that I created beforehand, right here. Following that, that's my guideline or a reference point. And that's why it's good to build up on things because if you just start throwing stuff down and you're not really sure what you're doing or you don't have a, a reference point, then, you know, things could just look kind of uh, out of or unnatural is just all over the place right so giving yourself some reference points to work off of is very important especially when it's something that you're not used to drawing or painting all the time like obviously with animals or creatures um, you know you're always drawing something different and new because there are so many different animals right so it's important to build up on what, on it, especially if you're trying to transition it into some kind of humanoid, a uh, hybrid, right? <clears throat> That's why I think when you see a lot of uh, hybrid uh, designs, it looks odd or like silly or like tacky because um, that effort hasn't been put in right. Of really slowly building up on something, trying to understand what's going on in the anatomy, in the design of the animal before you start like, just throwing stuff down. And if I was just painting this on my own, you know, not streaming it, I really would be spending quite a bit of time just staring at the reference. And I, me I mentioned this last week as well. And of course, that would be strange for me to do that here. Because <laughs> I'll just be staring out into space up here. Uh, but really, that's what I would be doing. Um, spending the time to observe the images that I've collected. Uh, just by looking at it, observing it paying attention to the designs, um, trying different things until it works. Uh, that's really what I'd be doing. And definitely I wouldn't get it all in one shot. Uh, there's really no way that would happen unless I'm extremely lucky, which, yeah, is very rare. <laughs> So yeah, it, it takes multiple tries to get it right. Here I'm trying to keep in mind that I do want the fur around the chest area to be lighter. And I'm probably gonna have to go much lighter than what I have right now. But for now, I'm just trying to make it brighter than the rest of the areas outside or on the outer side of the uh, body.
And if you're again not sure what to do with the uh, the spots or the dots here, I'm basically going with the flow of the anatomy of you know the chest muscles that might even just be a part of you know human anatomy. But I'm following that line because um, it is a natural line, right? So that's gonna look correct where I could sell it as being believable more easily than me just making something up. So I'm following that natural uh, line that goes across the chest into the armpit area. This basically divides the lower part of the chest and the upper part of the chest muscle. So that's the line I'm going to follow to create that pattern. Oh, is, uh, Margaret, is your uh, Cintiq too large? <laughs> yeah, um, ever since I've gotten a Cintiq, I've always had super large desks just to have enough room for everything. Right now I have four screens up here, so uh, I just love having a very large uh, workspace. It just makes everything nicer and you just have room for everything. Nothing gets in the way. You know, room for books as well. Um, yep. So it looks like you might have to upgrade your uh, desk as well. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna try to repeat this over onto the other side before I move forward. Again, following the uh, guidelines for um, the pattern design that I had earlier. I'm creating a hard edge from that design point and then feathering it out to show off my forms. I am going to adjust the silhouette here and make it chunkier, but that's more of an experiment that I want to try out, so I'm leaving it. Meaning, uh, I'm not sure how furry or chunky I want it to look at this point, so I'm going to keep that experiment separate, or that attempt separate. This area as well, under the uh, chin, the neck area, I'm gonna have to experiment with that as well. So it looks kind of weird right now. Uh, but let's try throwing something down there. Cause again, the tricky part is it's lighter. It's supposed to be a lighter fur, but at the same time it's in shadow, right? So I don't want to go too light on it, but at the same time, uh, not too dark as well and there's texture on it as well so that makes it even more tricky for me at least so i want to slowly build up on that <clears throat> or you could just paint it in with all the full texture the other way is just to paint it all in ignore the lighting and then throw on a multiply over it later just to darken it, right? That might be something I'll do.
I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Skyrim. I forget what that is. I've heard of it before. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a game, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know. Why does it remind you? Are there characters like this in the game? collapse some of this. Okay, there we go. Too many layers. Is Skyrim a fun game? Is it it's a role-playing game, right? Alright, I'm gonna try to figure out a little bit of the shoulders, uh, light it up just like I've done here, just like I've done here with the chest. Uh, not the complete fur texture, but at least um, try to figure out the uh, direction I want to take it. And then I'm gonna go back and try to play with um, the silhouette here and how chunky I want everything to be here. I am keeping in mind the uh, little uh, pattern indicators that I put in here. So I'm just going to indicate this real quick and then go to the fur. And sometimes that happens where if you're not sure what you're doing, you just, you're just, I'm just really hesitating to be bolder and move this forward. So again, it's good to be aware of what you're doing. And right now I'm feeling like I am being too overly cautious when I don't need to be. So let's go and throw some of this on. All right. Probably gonna start with the face area, see if I can make any major adjustments to it. At least the uh, silhouette of it. Taking a second look at my reference real quick before I commit to anything. Oops. Hmm. Yeah, so in one of my references, it looked like the fur was going the other way, but really in most of the references, it looks like it's more of a circular shape like that. So I'm going to stick to that. Yeah, that is looking a little bit more like a lynx.
and the way I work is different or you know it's more on the side of as I'm working on something I'm really bringing it closer to what it should look like I'm always changing things a little bit uh, in the beginning it, I start pretty rough everyone's approach is a little different that's my style it look, my final image will look pretty different from how I started it I don't know if that's the case in um, these streams though because the way I'm working is, you know, to be honest, a bit different again, because you guys are watching and um, I don't want to waste your time. So it is a little different. I'll experiment a lot more. Just trying different things and then scrapping it. If it doesn't work, I'll do a lot of that. I'll do some of that here just to show you guys. That, that is really what happens in this process. There's a lot of trial and error, just trying different things. Yeah, Rushback, I used to be into, um, I used to play uh, role-playing games all the time. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Ultima 7. <laughs> it's probably super old. It's ancient probably to you guys. Most of you guys. <clears throat> like uh, Serpent Isle, Blackgate. All those games were super awesome role-playing games back in the day. I don't know if you guys know Torment. That came later. But that was a pretty awesome, unique game as well. And I prefer more the uh, sandbox type, like open role-playing games, not the linear types. Where you could basically run around and do whatever you want. exaggerate as much as I can without it looking goofy. Hmm. 
I think I like that better overall, so um, I'm going to try to repeat that on this side. I think that does make it look a little bit more like a lynx further away from a tiger. And I think the, uh, later on when I adjust the uh, colors, it will help even more. Oops. Part of me feels like I broke up that face, uh, the edges of the face a little too much where it's broken up evenly. But um, I will come back and address that at some other point. At this point, let's just keep moving on. Uh, let's, let's throw the eyes in. Let's just quickly indicate it.
Hey, just fast. Hey, Riz, uh, what am I doing? I am uh, painting a hybrid lynx human, but it's looking like a tiger. But we're gonna address that. I'm not trying to necessarily make it look entirely like it has to be a lynx, but definitely getting inspiration from a lynx. Um, there are a lot of adjustments I have to make that I'm noticing right now as I zoom out on it. But uh, again, those are things we can adjust later. Oh, you lost your nib, Margaret? Yeah, uh, you have extra nibs that come in it, right? Like, um, if you have uh, one of these, right? It comes with one of these, right? So you just have to unscrew the bottom or twist it and it'll show a lot more nibs under there. So if you have this, check it out. I actually didn't know about that until recently. <laughs> One of my coworkers made fun of me for it. I'm like, I didn't know. No one told me. Hey, Kaz, thanks, man. Trying, I'm trying. I mean, to be honest, all this stuff is quite intimidating to me. Um, I have to try. It's not like I draw this kind of stuff all the time. Um, it's my first uh, cat-human hybrid, wild-cat-human hybrid. So it's quite challenging. And really, there's a lot of things I honestly don't like about it. Or things I want to try differently, right? This is a good base for me to work off of. And I would completely try to tear this part and manipulate it. But it would look like a total mess if I did it here, so not going to really do that. <clears throat> but here I'm going to try to um, see what it would look like if the fur is a little chunkier. And I'm noticing already that when I do that, it's going to mess with the silhouette of the face. So I have to pick and choose what I'm going to do. Let's try it out. Yeah, I'm going to make the shoulders a bit chunkier and furrier, at least on the edges. Yeah, like honestly guys, even even when I'm thinking about doing this stream for this wildcat, I get a little like nervous about it, like thinking about doing it because again, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing with, I'm not quite familiar with all this. Uh, normally, you know, if again, I'm just working on this on my own, I don't really care, no one's watching me mess up and screw up, right, or try different things. Uh, with everyone watching and seeing you try to figure things out. It's a bit different. Yeah, but it's fun. It's um, it's a challenge, right? And when you challenge yourself, it doesn't always work out. At least on your first attempt.
I think that looks more beast-like, which I think I like. So I'm gonna go with it. fur I'm trying to still again keep in mind that of the anatomy base that I have under it I don't want to completely ignore it right so I'm trying to keep that in mind Hey, Riz, you do uh, 3D animation? Awesome. Yeah, animation is um, definitely an awesome part of the process. Yeah, it's always great to see things come to life, right, when you're animating things. Oh, you only get an extra three, Margaret? Hmm. That's not as much as I thought. And cat cause, uh, I do use ArtStation, but I haven't really updated it in a long time. I think I only have a few images up on it. <laughs> I should get to that. Uh, yeah, I gotta update that. I have a carbon made. You could look up Bernie Kang carbon made. I think it's in the YouTube description. Uh, so you could check out my work there. Again, I haven't really updated it though. It's all older work. Riz is asking, whenever I'm making the human form, I always screw up on the proportions. Yes, uh, that happens to all of us sometimes. Uh, just make the adjustments later. Like, uh, like for example, let's say this is a human or whatever, or I want to adjust the proportions, just grab the whole piece and make the adjustments and what that does even though you know you're making this adjustment after the fact that you've drawn it it trains your eye the more you do this it trains your eye to notice what looks right what doesn't look right so it's good to um, just do that and you know just keep doing your figure studies that will train you to see again what looks right what doesn't look right And generally, um, you could look, look up uh, figure drawing books where um, they basically talk about general proportions, like eight heads, right? The body is as tall as eight heads. And then, um, you know, the limb length from the shoulder to the elbow, elbow to the wrist area is the same length. So you keep those things in mind. Same goes for the hip to the knee, knee to the uh, bottom of the foot, similar in length. So look those things up. Hey Bean, thanks. Again, I'm trying here. I hope you guys keep continue to challenge yourselves too. I know as students, uh, sometimes you, uh, you guys are hesitant to try different things as well. I mean, professionals are like that too. I think we're all like that sometimes. Definitely push yourselves to do things that you're uncomfortable with. If it makes sense too. And as a student, you really want to experiment. That's really the time to experiment.
<clears throat> Again, I'm noticing that I'm being hesitant myself here with uh, how furry I want to, I can take this. So I'm going to try to push it right now, go lighter and make it fluffier. And I don't know if that's really what I'm going to want, but let's just try it. kind of hard to show that from this angle, but let's try it again. This isn't really looking the way I want it to look. Trying to make it work here without giving up too quick on this. Yeah, never be afraid to try different things. Or don't let the fear, because a lot of, all of us are fearful of things sometimes, right? If we're really honest. It's not like great fear or anything, but still, um, we hesitate sometimes because we're afraid of messing something up or failing, right? So don't let that fear control what you do or don't do. Just try it out. And again, knowing that it might not work, but it's okay. Like here, I don't know if that's working. <laughs> it looks like a mess right now, but again, I'm trying to figure it out before I 
scrap it. Sometimes, um, yeah, I'll give up too quickly on it. But yeah, in this case, I'm trying to make it work. Like, what if uh, the art director or client tells you, oh, I want a fluffier chest, right? I want more hair fur there. I don't want to see all that muscle. I want to see fur. Then you got to figure it out, right? You got to make it work somehow. Checking out my reference again to see if it could help me give me some direction in what I'm doing here or how I should take this. Hmm. I'm going to try lightening this whole area up. All right, I'm gonna to try to repeat that on the other side. Uh, if you guys draw animals, what's the toughest animal that you've ever drawn or painted? Let me know. Man, he's looking like an owl. <laughs> he's looking like a tiger owl. Put a beak on him. 
Yeah, that's looking weird for what I, like to be honest. I might have to scrap this whole thing, this whole experiment. Yeah, I don't like that. That looks like an owl's body. So there you go. You saw one of my little experiments fail. Which does happen quite often. Let's see. Yeah, you know what? I should have stuck to um now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, I'll make I'll keep this area furrier and chunkier and this area more like, you know, shorter hair, maybe a bit chunkier here like I have it. And I'll stick with that instead of having everything look furry. I think that's a better direction to go with. So yeah, like I tried it and I realized I don't like it. So that's the end of that. Yeah, let's figure out the shoulder area. Tiger Owl. Yeah, Blasphemer. That's what it was looking like. Uh, oh, Margaret, you're saying that uh, birds are still complicated? Oh, we'll try a bird um, next time. I like drawing birds, actually. Maybe some kind of parrot. They're pretty fun. Uh, the overall structure of a bird is really quite simple. Uh, but yeah, the challenging part are the indicating the feathers, right? And making sure that the proportions look uh, correct because they are quite subtle, even though it's simple. Um, Akasha, uh, you're asking, were you using an overlay layer with that owl fur? No, it was just a normal layer. Usually I use overlay towards the end to make some adjustments to the overall uh, lighting. Not at this point. But yeah, eventually I think I will use overlay. Um, but um, yeah, maybe I'll work on this, you know, in my own during my own time, and show you guys when it's finished, when it does get finished. But next week, we'll move on to something new. I think we'll just do some take a break from these concepts. And just do some studies like animal studies off of uh, reference I'll share the reference image with you um, so that you guys can follow along if you want to uh, again this time I will be using reference that I can show you guys 
Um, so just keep in mind that the amount of uh, images that I can show you are quite limited. Uh, so it's not going to be like the best reference that you can find on Google. Uh, but I'll find try to find something decent with good lighting and all that. Um, yeah, so uh, next week maybe we'll try a bird, some kind of parrot, or uh, I'll figure it out. And then um, you can follow along with me. Yeah, that'd be cool to see what you guys come up with too. Hey, Sebastian. Yeah, I think it'll be maybe more helpful to you guys to do um, some studies off of references that you guys could follow along with take a break from these because to be honest uh, like I keep saying to you guys it's quite distracting for me to or it's difficult for me to um, do creative things like this where I'm trying to do some a concept while I'm talking or uh, yeah it's just really uh, challenging for me uh, yeah so we'll take a break from this And anyways, this this uh, channel is supposed to be, or this uh, segment that I do is supposed to be more of a life drawing uh, time anyways. So let's try that out. Will this sound good to you guys? Actually, let, so let's say I'm done with this uh, section and I'll try using some overlay right now. I'm going to go to a soft brush. Make it a little bit more light, like a yellowish color. Yeah, so this is one easy way of making quick adjustments after you have a value range and some information within your image, then you can quickly adjust the lighting and make adjustments to the lighting using overlay. And it also creates more uh, color variation as well. just makes things pop as well <laughs> really quickly without much effort hey akasha thank you Glad uh, you like the streams. Oh, by the way, if you do like it, uh, please give a thumbs up to this uh, video. It does help the school a lot. Ooh. Yeah, so that overlay definitely helps here. Popping things out. And that's basically what I would be doing if I was completed with the stage of the image for the process. I would go back and do something like this here.
That straight up looks like a tiger. I'm going to try adjusting the colors real quick too, too, just to see if it helps. something real quick. It's a little bit closer to the Lynx color. So again, I just copy and paste that just to experiment with the color real quick. And I do like it better overall. And if I were to uh, say again, I was done with this process here. With the overlay, the last thing I would really do with this image is do my final touches, the highlights, if I need to add anything else and clean up my silhouette and add in any additional uh, details that I would want in my focal areas, which would be around the face, or at least one of them would be around the face. I would also add in the whiskers and things like that just to really bring it to life. Just my last minute details. Let's add some whiskers real quick. subscribe to your YouTube channel. Uh, are you with a CG Spectrum? If you are, just message me uh, through Slack and send me your uh, YouTube channel. This is not my personal YouTube channel, so I can't do this, but sure. Through my own, I will. be too bright but again I can make that adjustment the values later just want to make sure things are popping and that the texture is readable where I want it to be
never be afraid to make fixes if you need to, like, and noticing this side of the head is not in proportion to the other side of the face. So I'm making that bigger. Send me a link through Slack, please, Riz. My name is Bernie Kang. Look for me on uh, Slack through CG Spectrum. All right, thanks everyone. Uh, it was good uh, hanging out with you guys and drawing and painting. Uh, have a good week. I will, uh, again, for next week's uh, stream, we'll be doing an animal. I will be posting the reference so you guys can uh, work alongside with me. All right, so have a good week, everyone. See ya, bye.